about with reference to diabetes, which is a very common disease, and it's also a disease of lifestyle. Huh? So let's jump in. Now, a reminder that terahertz radiation uh, is on the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum includes light, the light that enables to see, and uh, it is between microwave and infrared. I'll show you where it is later on. And it's primarily used in telecommunications. And uh, if your phone has 5G, that's microwave. 6G is terahertz. Just to give you information. So terahertz is very advanced. In other words, they exceed microwave. They're also ideal for detecting something. Almost every molecule has a fingerprint. Uh, biological molecule in the in the spectrum. Okay, so that's where terahertz is. This is visible light. Huh? Visible light from red all the way to purple. It's this that very is narrow band here. Okay. Uh, shorter frequency, ultraviolet, X-rays, gamma rays. All this cause changes in the human cell. That's why you can't go for X-ray too many times. You know that, right? The infrared, infrared somehow is helpful to us. Huh? The infrared saunas and all that. Then microwave and radio waves from where we get uh, radio, television, and all that. Okay? So that's where terrorist is. It's important to remember that because when we have to understand what terrorist is able to do, it is because of its. Uh, characteristics as between microwave and infrared. So, how did terahertz came to be? Well, it was very hard to study terahertz. That's why it's been called the terahertz gap, and I'll explain why there's a gap later. But in the 1990s, there were new techniques whereby we can generate terahertz wave, we can monitor, and we can detect terahertz wave. That's when the breakthrough came in the 1990s. So it's quite recent. And it can detect concealed objects and identify objects flowing in a pipe. You can't see inside, but it can detect. Which means that it can do things which the naked eye cannot see. And in fact, in 2011, terrorists was used on a 18th century painting to uncover the hidden meaning, the hidden name of the artist. Uh, uh, old paintings, as you know, sometimes people paint over it. Uh, and this particular painting was painted over. And so it, it was able to discover exactly what was underneath. Now, because it's non ionizing, that's where it's different from X rays and gamma rays. It can be used to study the human body, active as well as passive. Why passive? Do you know that the human body also produces terrorist waves? Uh, your body also produces. Not very much, but enough to be detectable. So the terrorist gap comes from the fact that microwaves and below are studied under electronics. We use techniques of electronics to study. Infrared and above, we use light or light techniques to study photonics. But nowadays, we use photonic techniques to study terahertz wave. So that's where the advance come. Hmm? Applications. So, because it can carry much more information, it's use of communication, and like I say, 6G is terahertz waves. Military and security, you can see true things. And uh, I think in one YouTube video, you can see it. Uh, Ordinary uh, scanners cannot detect gun or whatever hidden, properly hidden. But terrorists is able to do so. Is that powerful? They can look inside plastics and all that. Agriculture. They can monitor pesticide control, seed and soil monitoring. This is very interesting because pesticide, it can detect the difference between pesticide on plants. And drug monitoring. Uh, when I looked it up, I found that how they monitor drought is that they 
use it to use spectroscopy to shine on the leaves or plants and they can measure the water content. That's how they de determine whether a drop is coming. Isn't that interesting? So because of all these properties, they were introduced to health and science. Huh? And because, as I said, the body itself produces terrorist waves. So it's only natural that is used in health and science. So that's why it's called the light of life. Now, terrorists has healing properties. And the healing come, properties come from two things. Come from heat, come from vibration. So a lot of the research earlier on, we can't distinguish whether it is heat or vibration. Now if it's heat, then infrared or near infrared will also be active. That's why you sit before a campfire. That's why you sit in the morning facing the sun. There are health benefits because of the heat. So heat, far infrared, which is terrorist, has also an effect. So newer research, what they did was, they take away the heat element. Just like in the pro version, uh, you have a cool uh, uh, terrorist waves, not the hot one. Uh, the classic all have hot, as well as the uh, premium also have heat, as well as terrorist waves. So they use only the vibration. And you can still detect the effects of terrorist waves. That is a beauty. So in other words, it is the vibration that has an effect. And this is terribly important because this means that near infrared, which is uh, uh, the usual infrared you come across with infrared sonars and so forth, don't have the effect that terahertz has. So it's very, very important. So medically, there are two application one is diagnosis terrorists can actually detect things as i said uh, if you can detect drought it can, can detect pesticide it can detect a lot of things uh, in the human body and that's why a lot of research has been done as far as this is concerned in fact it's better than a lot of the scans that you have which are isotopic scans and all that but I'm not going to talk about this because this is something that is quite uh, uh, in-depth. I'm going to talk about therapy devices which we all use to make ourselves feel better or improve the way our body is. And like I said, it's not ionizing. It won't harm our body. It can penetrate through all kinds of materials. It can shine through. You can wear your clothes and still penetrate but it will be absorbed by polar compounds. Polar compounds are compounds that conduct electricity. So water is a polar compound, or so water will absorb it. Metals, any metallic things will absorb it. So the energy in terrorist wave is very small, and it corresponds to what is known as hydrogen valve bonds or van der Waals forces. So these, these are the kind of forces that hold molecules together. If you look at your DNA or your protein molecule, it's folded uh, many folds. And these folds are held together by terrorist forces, by this kind of forces, bonds and fundamental forces. So because it has this kind of energy, it can also break this kind of energy, and that's how terrorists can change the shape of molecules by action on these bonds. So because human cells resonate at that frequency, it can therefore activate cells and regulate cells. So, and that's how it regulates our body, our function, body's function, because of its effect on uh, chemicals within the body. So, this is a summary of what terrorists does to your body. It opens up your blood vessels, increases circulation, and remove waste. Very important, huh? Uh, a lot of our fun one of the main functions of circulation is to remove waste. Uh, and when you activate, uh, molecules become activated. Uh, and inside the cell, there are uh, factories of the cell. Uh, 
they are called mitochondrial, small tiny things in within the cell. And in the mitochondria, energy production takes place as well as a lot of other activities. And they are hyperactive cells. When you have inflammation, cells are hyperactive. Right? Too much energy, too, too much redness, swelling and all that, it can reduce, make it normal, reduce the inflammation. That's the ability of uh, terrorists and of course one important part is that it has an effect on, on DNA. It actually can unzip DNA, open up DNA and therefore activate it. So this is a summary. I will take you through. So one very important thing is that it open up blood vessels. Okay? So the blood vessels here, when you shine terrorists with it open up. And when you open up, blood will flow through. When it reach the tissue, because blood comes from the heart, heart pump has pressure, right? When there's a pressure, what happens? Water, oxygen, all leaves. Uh, because of the high pressure and so forth. Uh, and it goes to the tissue where water and all the nutrients and oxygen is used by the tissue. And then when it comes here, water again carbon dioxide, waste products, or enter the veins. But unfortunately, the veins are not under pressure. So you find that a lot of excess water is still around. And in the tissue, you find these lymph vessels. This return all the excess water back to the heart. So this is in essence what terrorists are able to do. Open up your blood vessels. The next thing is, it regulates inflammation. So in the blood, there are uh, immune cells, all these immune cells, uh, you know they are immune cells because they have uh, nucleus is in two or three lobes, uh, and it reduces the activity of these immune cells and make the inflammation better. Okay? And that's what terrorists can do. Activate normal cells. In the cells, as I said, we have something called the mitochondria. These are all the activities of the mitochondria listed there. It can metabolize amino acids, lipids which are fats, and so forth. It can transport, metabolize and ions, create energy. ATP is an energy molecule. Uh, it can synthesize all kinds of things. And it can translate gene genetic information to produce new proteins, it can gobble up waste products, it can cause cells to die, signaling, of all kinds of activities take place in the mitochondria. This is where all the activity of the cell takes place. And so therefore there is a need to protect the mitochondria. Huh? And Terra is able to do that. I will go into some details later on. It causes cells to die, now, cell has a lifespan of about 120 days. After that period, the cell will die. So, if the cell dies, then you have a lot of waste products that need to be taken care of. So, the human body has a way to dispose of cells that are dead and no, no longer useful. They, all the dead parts of the cell that die release molecules that carries information like find me, eat me. So they go into a white blood cell that can actually engulf all this unwanted protein and they are degraded and uh, kind of digested. Uh, that's how the body renews itself. Uh, okay? You mean eat them up like the heart cell? Uh, there are certain white cells that can actually gobble up all these things. It, it, they also gobble up bacteria and all kinds of other things. Uh, for many, for some, like for example, heavy metals that are poisonous, they also gobble up. Oh. They have this function to clean up. Uh, oh. uh, these are quite large white blood cells. Uh, I, I believe they are called macrocytes. Uh, they are they're quite big. Uh. So they have this ability to do that. Uh. So it's called phagocytic. Phag phago means to swallow up. Yeah. And that's what they do. Okay. So that's how uh, you recycle because 
all the nuclear material DNA are broken down into small pieces and then reassemble again. Yeah. That is if they are human cells. I mean, yeah, uh, foreign bodies like bacteria and all this stuff, it's just gobbled up and excreted. See? So, Terahertz is able to kill viruses as well as fungus and bacteria. And certainly, this is why I got interested in the first place because during uh, COVID, uh, there were studies that showed that uh, terrorists is able to kill uh, the COVID virus. Which is true. Yeah, they are research done. Yeah. It is a fact, and that's how I got interested. Because if they can do that, then they can do a lot of things. And certainly, for fungal infection in Singapore, a lot of people have fungal infection because of the heat. And you can remove that also. The other thing is that it can have an activity on DNA. As you know, DNA is in two strands held together by bonds. Okay, as you see, these are uh, hydrogen bonds. Terrorist is able to unzip it. So when you unzip the DNA, DNA becomes active. Like here, you can uh, print the information on uh, on RNA, uh, transfer DNA, and this RNA, which read the genetic information, go into the cell, uh, get the protein to synthesize whatever you need for your human body. It can also replicate the DNA. Uh, so, let's say you want to the cell to divide into two cells. Then you need to unzip it. This one produces a strand uh, that is corresponding to the other, to the opposite. And this one produces a strand to the opposite. And then it becomes two sets of DNA and then it separates. So that's what happened uh, for, uh, for, the, for the cell to replicate. So now we talk about diabetes. What is diabetes actually? It's a disease of the action of a hormone and its effect on blood sugar. The two types, one is from birth you don't have, it's called type 1. Number two, as you get older, your body fail to respond to insulin or insulin insensitivity or, or insulin resistance right? mm -hmm. that's what it's called so what are the symptoms of diabetes you find that when you have diabetes and if you have not been diagnosed yet you tend to urinate you are thirsty you lose weight mm -hmm. without trying if you're hungry if you're tired blur vision, maybe some numbness or tingling, sensations in the hands, the skin is dry, everything seems to heal slowly, and you have frequent infections, you know, you, you get things that, that doesn't quite heal. You know. So, what is diabetes? Well, this is a blood sugar. The normal blood sugar is up to uh, fasting, about 70 to about 100 below 100 huh? mm. below 70 of course is too low and then if you eat anything it will go up and it can go up to as high as 180 if 180 milligrams of sugar in your blood is what is known as a renal threshold mm. renal threshold means that if your blood sugar is above that it will come out in the urine and typically, for example, in Chinese, uh, diabetes is literally sugar in the urine. Huh? So if it's more, it's a, it comes out in the urine. After you eat, it can go up to as high as 180 mm -hmm. within one hour, and then it comes down again. Huh? Okay, sometimes when you're hungry, like early in the morning, just before you wake up, your blood sugar goes high. Or uh, if you fast, your blood sugar also go up. Why? 
this is the reason why. You see, blood sugar is controlled by a few things. There is a hormone called glucagon. It increases blood sugar. Insulin decreases blood sugar. We talk a lot about insulin. We don't talk about glucagon. Why? Because includes, increased blood sugar is not a problem. <laughs> Decreasing blood sugar is a problem. And how do you increase blood sugar? We know. Just eat. When you eat, you stick food and the food get converted to glucose. So ghrelin is a hormone that stimulates appetite. There's another two hormone called leptin. It inhibits hunger stop you from eating. Okay. So, this was discovered I think 20-30 years ago when they discover families in I believe in the Pakistan area which were tremendously obese I think it was 20 years ago, 2000, around that. And the reason why they are obese is because they don't have lactate. So when you give them lactin, they don't eat so much, the weight goes down. So it's controlled by four hormones, isn't it? So that's where it is. Glucose, uh, gastrointestinal protein, glucagon-like protein, all this increases insulin. Okay, Varying, increase your appetite. Insulin and glucagon manage and of course leptin. But this is a very simplified picture. It's more complicated than that. When you take the considerations, the effect of stress, uh, epinephrine, cortisol, your fat cells, uh, your liver production, and so forth. But very simply, all we need to remember is that yeah, Hormones that regulate your blood sugar level up or down, and there are hormones that regulate your appetite, which increases your blood sugar, or leptin, which stop appetite and therefore reduce your blood sugar. What I want to impress on you is that it is much more complex than that. And why is that we have diabetes? It's because we override all these things by eating. Mm -hmm. uh, food has its pleasures, right? Mm -hmm. And when we eat too much, then no matter what hormones are circulating, we override all of them and we raise our blood sugar sky high. So that is diabetes. So when your blood sugar is always high, your blood, your, your human cell becomes resistant to insulin. That means it doesn't respond to insulin again. So, insulin causes your muscle, all the cells in your body to take up insulin for the glucose uptake. And if they don't get into the muscles and cells where they can be used, it goes to the liver or to the fat cells where they are converted to fat. So when blood sugar is high, what happens? your pancreas makes most insulin because it's out of control. So pancreas is the organ that produces insulin to control your sugar. So if the sugar is out of control, you produce more insulin in an attempt to control it. And because there's insulin resistance, your blood sugar rises. So you have this effect where the blood sugar is high, your insulin level is also high. And that is essentially what diabetes is. Uh, is it dangerous? I suppose it is. Uh, otherwise, it won't be a disease, isn't it? <laughs> ah, so these are the warning signs of diabetes: urination, urine tract infection, exhaustion, weight loss, hunger, tingling, slow healing wounds. Huh? And notice that when uh, in normal blood, there's not much glucose molecules around. In a situation where you have diabetes, with a lot of glucose in the blood, you see that it's crowded with this. Yeah, the insulin. Yeah, the yellow dots there. Yeah. Yeah. Glucose. Glucose. So you can imagine that when there's so much hyper concentration 
of glucose in the blood, what can happen? We talk about that. So, when there is insulin, when they, you eat a lot, huh? so your pancreas make more insulin, your cells don't respond because there's too much insulin there. Your sh glucose goes into the fat stores, get converted to fat. Huh? You feel tired and you feel hungry and you eat more food. You become a vicious cycle. That's what happens. And what happened to the glucose? Now, glucose is for energy, isn't it? Mm. Huh? What does it tell you? There is a lot of energy in the molecule, isn't it? Mm. It's a very reactive molecule. You can get so much energy out of that sugar molecule. So because of that, if you have so much hyperactive molecule around, reaction tends to happen. Uh. Tends to reason. Uh. Uh, you put a lot of combustible, a lot of dry leaves and dry wood, and you said, anything can happen. All you need to do is a match or, or heat, and the whole thing bursts into flame. Same thing here. You have so much glucose around, anything can happen. And what happens is that they become they be, begin to oxidize huh? and you have you can get glycated products and go on to advance glycated end products the word glycation simply means that the glucose combine with something else like your protein oh, can be blood uh, blood you have a protein called hemoglobin right mm -hmm. when transmit oxygen when you have excess, when your blood is filled with glucose molecules, it can combine with your hemoglobin and form a glycated form of hemoglobin, which is uh, abnormal. It can cause other things, huh? and I'll show you what it will cause. So this glycated hemoglobin can be detected, and now it's used as a means to detect whether you have diabetes or not, or how bad you are. So, this glycation can ha happen to any big molecule like fat molecule or protein molecule or whatever. And it, because it's so important, that's why this concept. Glucose is because of the excess glucose molecules which give rise to AGE or advanced glycated end products. AGE is a thing to remember. With glucose, you age, literally. Huh? Your body forms advanced glucose and products. So when you have excess molecules, some things happen. You can have emergencies. Huh? And the emergencies you see are diabetic ketoacidosis. When there's too much uh, glucose in your blood, you cannot uh, uh, metabolize. You get very acidic. Uh, and because insulin resistance, your cells can't utilize the glucose, it, it metabolizes fats, and that's where it gets acidotic. Then you have hyperglycemic, hyperosmolic state, or people call it HHS, double HS, where too much sugar molecules, the blood becomes hyper concentrated, and you begin to have symptoms. Or you end up with lactic acidosis because of this. If there's incomplete combustion of glucose, if it's incomplete burnt out, it forms lactic acid. It's also acidic. And then another complication is when you administer too much insulin or you take too much anti diabetic, you go into a situation where your glucose goes very low, hypoglycemic. So this all these four conditions can cause you to be unconscious or to be very uh, restless, confused and disturbed. Hypoglycemic is easiest if he appears to be normal. All you need to do is take something, take some glucose huh? or inject glucose. They wake up straight away. <laughs> very simple. Huh? But the other three is a bit more difficult because they have difficulty breathing, they may be confused, they whatever, you've got to get them to the hospital because they need to be controlled medically. Mm -hmm. 
I used to be in the medical ward and you see diabetes coming in with all this, you know. So you need to resuscitate them, find out what's the cause, what's the blood sugar, and do the right thing to bring the sugar down, down bring the blood pressure down and so forth. It's an emergency. Uh, you can die from it if you're not properly treated. So, what is the effect of high blood sugar? Very simple. We say just now, glycation happened. It's a spontaneous reaction. The glucose will combine with any molecules around to glycate it, to attach itself to it. And these are called AGE, we say that. AGE can be toxic, and I'll show you some of the toxicity later on. But the most important thing AGE does is that it leads to the production of ROS, or reactive oxygen species. Now, you heard everybody say we must take antioxidants. Why we take antioxidants? Because of this ROS. This ROS comes about because AGE is the production of this. And it is ROS, the presence of excessive ROS that give us oxidative stress. You see? So you need antioxidants to neutralize it. Why? Why must neutralize? Why? Because ROS, the result of high blood sugar and AGE, it causes damage to your retinopathy, which is your eye, it causes that neuropathy, which is your nerves, it causes nephropathy, which is your kidneys, and also your heart. That's why people with diabetes always have heart attacks without the symptoms. So you can, you can die from a heart attack if you have diabetes without knowing that you have a heart attack. Unless the doctor do an ECG or something like that to, to find out what's happening. So that's why it's so dangerous. See? And... So actually the life of diabetes is a heart attack? Or yes. Uh, I have a friend who, is a, who, who was a missionary and one, one time he came back and then he was in hospital so I asked him what happened. He said, Doctor, I have a heart attack. Said, Do you have any chest pain? He says, no. Said, Are you diabetic? He said, the doctor told him so. Oh. When you're diabetic, you don't know. Yeah. Because of this. So you don't know. You actually don't know. It's a silent heart attack. AGA can damage cells. Plus, it produces ROS which causes you even more damage. And AGA can cause cells to degenerate and kill themselves or commit suicide, so to speak. It can damage intra and extracellular proteins. Mm -hmm. So, AGE has the ability to damage DNA. Mm -hmm. It can damage the mitochondria, which produce all the various things that... Uh, uh, is the very reason why your cell is there for, to produce whatever, to new proteins, to transmit whatever things, right? And in the skin, AG causes all the collagen to stiffen. And the reason is because they disrupt all the, they cause the damage to the collagen. Mm -hmm. And you will look old because of this. Mm -hmm. So, this is glycation. Mm -hmm. The sugar will combine with any, anything, protein, fat molecule, oxidize it, inflammation, so, it causes a lot of signaling disorder. By the way, ROS has a good function. It's an indication that something is going uh, haywire. And in your cells, there are receptors that are sensitive to ROS. So if ROS is a small amount, your cell is activated to do something. But when ROS is too much, then it really do a lot of harm. So, uh, glycation, 
this is a TTNAO is a very toxic product produced by the bacteria in your gut. So in combination with this collagen, they break up all the linkage. So when they break up all the linkage, your collagen instead of giving you a smooth skin, it give you this kind of appearance. Okay. So it gives rise to ROS, which gives rise to all the problems. And your artery, you have blood pressure because why? Like the collagen on the skin, uh, the protein in it becomes broken up and it becomes stiffened, become very stiff. So when your artery become very stiff, uh, that's where you get high blood pressure. So all because of high blood sugar. That's what happened. And that's why diabetes is dangerous. So we call this metabolic syndrome. Three things you must remember. High blood sugar, high blood pressure, and obesity. Obesity always means high cholesterol. No? So these three things constitute a metabolic syndrome. Risk of heart disease and strokes. And I think that's where your terrorist waves can help, you know. And metabolic syndrome is very important because if we can control the metabolic syndrome, if you see a person who is obese and has high blood pressure and he has diabetes, my goodness, you need a lot of lifestyle changes. You can forget about eating good food every day. Uh, excessive amount of food that raise your blood sugar, you're going to make it worse. You will get things under control and you really need medication. Why do we have metabolic syndrome? Well, overweight and obesity. This is a nice way of putting it. <laughs> overeating. <laughs> I would say overeating is the main cause. And then you eat, you take in a lot of energy and you don't exercise. You are not active. Because the more obese you are, the more likely you won't get up and move, right? We know that. You see obese people, they just sit there. Because it takes a lot of effort to carry the body up and to get the body moving. So they don't move. And when you have so much fat and high glucose, insulin resistance. You know, I show you already. Insulin resistance means AGE, production of all those uh, end products, production of all those ROS, the reactive oxygen species. Okay? Every day we have insulin uh, production, right? Uh, insulin. And, uh, every day there's a production in insulin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It produced in response to blood sugar level. To also what we eat also? No, blood sugar level. Uh, blood sugar level. Insulin responds to blood sugar level. As long as it's high, because insulin's action is to bring down the sugar level, it will be produced. It's a reaction. You see? As long as your sugar level is high, it will be produced. And because there's insulin resistance, diabetes therefore is not only high blood sugar, but high insulin. Because it's insensitive. You understand? So the high blood pressure basically Oh, as you see, the high blood pressure can be the result of all that. Huh? But if you have, let's say you have a family history of high blood pressure, that means genetically you have high blood pressure. The high blood pressure will make it worse. You see? That's what the metabolic syndrome is all about. Huh? And then if you just eat constantly without exercising, that's why exercise saves you. Because exercise will cause your blood sugar to come down. Because when you exercise, what happens? You got to burn energy, isn't it? So when you burn energy, your muscle cell will need glucose, isn't it? So you will take glucose from the bloodstream. When you take glucose from the bloodstream, what happens? It will come down. Right? So that's why people say after a meal they must go for a walk, which is good. But don't take too slow a walk. Ah. <laughs> walk briskly. Okay. Then you have that effect. You will actually bring down your blood glucose. It is what is needed. You see? But how about people who wake up in the morning, go for a walk first, then come back for a meal? 
for breakfast. That's okay. That's okay. But also will bring down the lunch. Okay. okay. It depends. Uh. Later on, I will, I will talk about this. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. But before you wake up, just before you wake up, your blood sugar can be quite high. Oh, okay. uh, because due to fasting. When <coughs> you are fasting, like, uh, remember I said earlier on, glucagon, the hormone will raise your blood sugar, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So when your blood sugar level is very low, your glucagon will kick in and you bring the sugar level up. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then as you wake up, you will come down again. Mm -hmm. So that's why you go for your blood test then. Okay, so there are genetic factors. Mm -hmm. There are factors uh, in your family background which uh, make you uh, prone to have high blood pressure or prone to be obese you know? mm -hmm. and so forth. Except for this, all the above mm -hmm. is due to our behavior. That's why diabetes is a lifestyle illness, especially in the modern age when we are very affluent and food is easily available and that's why I, after I give the lecture a lot of people keep asking me about diabetes mm -hmm. that's why I decided to do this update because it is a function of our behavior mm -hmm. yeah. whatever your genetics is so the complication is everywhere mm -hmm. heart, kidney, nerves mental health, vision, hearing, uh, and the circulation, okay? See this in this picture. Macrovascular, that means organ. Microvascular at the microscopic level, what do you see? Okay? So let's take one by one. Let's take the macro first. In the brain, increased risk of strokes and vascular disease. So you can have mouse stroke called transient ischemic attack or TIA. TIA means momentary weakness or momentary loss of <coughs> sensation. <coughs> now I am at risk for strokes and heart attack. So recently I have some transient ischemic attack, loss of balance. Mm. Uh, so go for a scan, yes, there is what they call a lacuna stroke, a tiny small area. Where they think. So, lacuna strokes are quite common. Huh? I've heard a lot of people having it after uh, I talk about it. Huh? Mm. And I suppose this is what getting old is. If you are prone to this kind of thing, you get this minor, minor irritation. That's why elderly always can't balance themselves, doesn't it? Mm. Huh? Because of all this, you see. So, you've got to repair it. And the way to repair is physical activity. Uh, use terrors to repair and regenerate stem cells or whatever to help you to recover from it and regain back uh, the thing. It can also cause cognitive impairment. That is, it can cause you to decline in your ability to think clearly and therefore you can take dementia. Mm -hmm. Does forgetfulness come in place? Forgetfulness? Then suddenly you forget the state of Okay, the, the, the brain is uh, as you grow older, the brain wants to be efficient. So, for example, if you don't need to do certain things, not to think in a certain way, or solve problems with relation to your work, then you will lose the ability. Mm -hmm. So it is true that if you don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. As you get older, you will lose your muscle mass. Mm -hmm. So if people you know, lift up their hand, you can flap. Mm -hmm. huh? That is the loss of muscle mass. Mm -hmm. The only way to get it back is do weight training. Mm -hmm. yeah. You do weight training, not so much you want muscles, but to retain your muscles. Mm -hmm. See, so, I do that. I don't have this flat. Mm -hmm. It's the same with your brain. Your brain cells, you find that what you don't need to remember, friends from long ago, you will forget. You see your old friend, we know each other, can't remember our name, can't remember all yeah. kind of things. Because you don't need to use it every day, so your brain do away without it. Mm -hmm. But what you need to remember, you need to remember to do certain things. Mm -hmm. You get better in it. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have a way of solving problems. You take one, two, three, four. So you face a similar problem, 
or elderly are very quick at solving problems because this is the way that they've been doing it and because they do it so often it's retained so that's how your body adapts with age see in your brain right? so in the heart complication is high blood pressure I explained already you know the thing becomes stiffen insulin resistance increased risk of coronary heart disease the, the silent heart attacks as I mentioned to you in the extremities particularly in the legs mm. narrowing of blood vessels increase the risk of lack of blood flow because the, the uh, blood vessels there's a lot of resistance and may even die out no? completely blocked so in the feet wounds heal very slowly and contribute to gangrene mm. I'll say more about this later on Huh? On the eye, high blood glucose and high blood pressure can lead to a lot of problems in the eye. I will show you uh, some pictures of what happened in the eye. In the kidney, you also damage the small blood vessels. And your kidney's ability to filter water and uh, release all the uh, excess waste products is due to the small blood vessels in the kidneys. And if these are damaged, they result in kidney damage and kidney failure and in the nerves they can lead to uh, as I say, damage to the nerve cells mm -hmm. resulting in pain, numbness and all kinds of things you see? Mm -hmm. so this is a good summary of the kind of things that can happen to you with diabetes mm -hmm. huh? so diabetes is high blood sugar but this is the effect of the high blood sugar, remember that mm. it's a lifestyle disease. So, heart attacks in time, mu muscle damage. So, because it damaged the blood vessels, when blood doesn't flow through the blood vessel anymore or it's a block, that's where uh, uh, you get a heart attack. So, when there's a block, chest pain, vomiting, dizziness, sweating, mm. uh, and in diabetics you may not have this. The chest pain is absent. Mm. So a lot of diabetics, when they come into hospital as an emergency, they don't complain of chest pain. Mm. They complain of breathlessness. They can't breathe. Mm. So you must check. Breathless, look like heart is failing. What's the cause? Do ECG and discover, hey, it's a heart attack. Mm. That's how we know it is a heart attack because of the test. In the eye, this is the novel. Huh? See the beautiful blood vessel? Mm -hmm. Remember doctor, take a light and shine in your eye and then peer through it? This is what they see. This is where uh, the nerve come out from. This is where you can see most clearly. Huh? And what happened? In diabetic, you find hemorrhages. Compare there's broken blood vessels, right? Mm. And blood accumulates around the blood vessels. Is that you compare with that? Then there's this heart exudate, there's this deposits. Huh? And then this cotton wool soft exudate here. Mm. Ballooning of uh, blood vessels and growth of tiny, tiny blood vessels in the retina. So you can't see clearly because all these damages is there. Mm. And this is due to diabetes. So you can see how much diabetes has damaged you by looking at the eye. Mm. Uh, with the ophthalmoscope. Look at the pupil and through the pupil you can see. Uh. Okay, of course the ophthalmologist has more sophisticated uh, ophthalmoscope. Uh, when you sit with, before a machine and they put the thing there, magnify the thing you see all this very clearly. Mm. So what's happened to the eye? Strokes. Strokes is caused by blood clots or cholesterol plugs. When there is a blockage, the distal part blood supply is cut off. And of course your brain cells die because no oxygen comes through. Survival is better than hemorrhagic stroke. Now blockage 
hemorrhagic stroke is when the blood vessel loss got, got, bro got broken and blood bleeds into the surrounding tissues of the brain. Huh? So for stroke, these are the survival rate. One year survival is very good, 60% survive, 40% die. Five years survival is much less, 30%. 30 so let me show you where it is. On the neck, this is one area where you can be blocked. This is the carotid artery. You can actually feel it here. You put your hand there, you can feel the pulse. That's where the carotid artery is. It divides into two, and this is where it can. Then there's a, an artery here, I, don't know, I believe it's a set in uh, the, one of the cerebral arteries, inferior or middle cerebral artery, where it can be blocked because it's very narrow. Huh? So when it, there's a sharp bend as well, so this is where the blockage occurs. Okay? This so dysmetic stroke is the uh, one that is, uh, is a major one, eh? Which one? This is my page, so not the minor one. This stroke. Hemorrhage. The, the, whether it's major or minor depends on how big it is. Oh. Hemorrhagic means that the artery wall bursts okay. and blood flow into it, okay. into the surrounding tissue. So like people have what? Mouth stroke. Mouth stroke second, depends on how big it is. Second time stroke, third time stroke, fourth time stroke. If you have stroke once, uh -huh. chances of a second stroke is about half or greater. That means if you have a stroke, you don't deal with the underlying condition, whether it's diabetes or whatever, or blood pressure, then the chance of you having a second stroke is very high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, usually the first stroke won't kill the patient, mm -hmm. but the second or third stroke will. But the mobility will be affected. Mobility depends on what area. Mm -hmm. So if it's a sensory stroke, they can't feel or they can't uh, balance themselves or whatever so they can still live with it okay. if it hits a certain area uh, I think it's the internal capsule where hit, internal capsule is where all the nerves that uh, affect movement is mm. so if it hit there of course you can't move mm. yeah. conversely the midbrain is a small area where a lot of nerves are tightly packed it is also the area where uh, the nerve center to control your breathing and so forth and your heart rate and so forth. Now, if a stroke occurs in that area, you won't survive. Mm. Because that controls breathing and vital functions. Mm. You knock that off, you will die. Mm. I've seen a uh, uh, mid-brain stroke uh, die before my very eyes. So we diagnose a brain patient, we tell the family, I don't, we don't think there's hope, please come. Mm. So they come. And within hours, it was gone. Mm. And the family was screaming, oh dad, you promised to bring us to whatever place. Mm. <laughs> also disappointed because it's so sudden, because it killed all the vital organs mm. that, that, that control all your vital uh, functions of the body. It's on the brain. Yes. Mid brain, mid brain. Yeah. Uh, that's very essential. Mm -hmm. So kidney. Mm -hmm. This is a healthy kidney. A diabetic kidney gets shrunken. So what happened in the kidney? Well, uh, in the kidney, this is a uh, filtering mechanism, the glomerulus, and the tubules where urine pass through. So blood comes in, filter, and it goes through. When it gets damaged, unhealthy, glomerulus, protein molecules spill, get, instead of being retained, it gets filtered out, and it gets protein in the urine. Right? Mm. So that's where it looks like the glomerulus, the filter, the, this, this, this thing glomerulus, this is here. Okay. And the tubules go in here and come out and then go into the urine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the structure of the kidney. I've given a talk on the kidney some weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So I've explained all this. Mm -hmm. 
are the extremities, the legs, diabetic neur neuropathy, where the nerves have been destroyed. So you have cells dying, you have all sorts of deformities, and all this discoloration, broken blood vessels and whatever, and swollen. Yes, this is diabetic. The uncontrolled diabetes eventually leads to this and eventually leads to amputation. Mm -hmm. And uh, life is hard. Yeah. Life is hard because you make it hard yourself, you exercise, you make the effort, live a healthy life, you won't suffer. Mm -hmm. You don't have to suffer this. Mm -hmm. You enjoy the good life, life is hard. You, have all these problems because of your good life and you don't want to discipline yourself, train yourself, look after yourself. Food life, you're talking about good food, right? <laughs> yeah. Healthy food. Healthy food. It's not that, you, well, I'll come to that afterwards. About what have we got to do? So, diabetic peripheral neuropathy is nerve damage caused mm. by blood sugar. Numbness, loss of sensations, tingling, burning sensation, sharp jabbing pain, insensitive to touch, muscular weakness, ulcers, all kinds of deformities. Mm -hmm. That's why the neurologist when he examine you feel that they are touching. Huh? Mm -hmm. And they test for pain sensations. These are various ways to test whether your nerve is still functioning or not. And when it's not functioning, that means the nerves in your extremities are all affected. So, gangrene. Gangrene means your cells have died, turn black. It's called gangrene when it turns black. And when your thing, when when your legs turn black, in other words, become gangrenous, the dead tissue send out a lot of toxins mm -hmm. and it can kill you. Mm -hmm. So the only way to deal with this kind of thing is to uh, amputate. Oh That's why diabetics end up unable to walk because they got amputated huh? either below knee or above knee depending on how far it has gone. See? And the amputation is to prevent the toxin from the dead tissue from reaching the heart and kill you. It's better to do without the legs and do without life, right? <laughs> Most people will agree to that because they want to live. You see? So life is hard. You either make your life hard by exercising, training yourself to be fit, or life is hard because it will attack you later on. Could there be cases that uh, when this uh, diabetic is concerned, they only affect the upper part of the shin area rather than the lower part. Is that is it also? It always attack the lower part because lower this part. is the extreme, oh, okay. the furthest away from the heart. Okay. So how about those leg that you I see outside sometimes? The leg is actually the back area at the shin area. Is it like I think no right? Shin area only. It's around here, yeah. Oh, this yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, not we walk here, but it's only from here to here. That's why very strange. Come on, I saw yeah, this. Yeah. I saw yeah. It's not like this. Always, always in yeah. the feet. It can, it's due to other causes then. May not be diabetic. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It can be due to injury, for instance. Injury. Oh, yes. Two legs. Two legs have this condition. Uh, osteoarthritis often affects the knees and the hips. Oh, it's a very part in this color. This color. So I see it quite scary. I, I don't know. I'm, unless I see it, I, I can't tell you. But I see in the, this color in the diabetic. In, in Singapore, I have a lot of... Diabetic always, always affects the extremities. Uh, the extremities. A lot of things can happen. Yeah? Uh, if you are on blood thinners, it can cause microscopic hemorrhages. Mm. It can have this appearance. Mm. But other parts, your sensation, your 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 in response to touch or pain is intact. So if you are unfortunate then microscopic hemorrhages can occur. 
especially is far away from the heart. Mm. This is the most uh, distant region of the body from the heart. Mm. Uh, the hand is closer to the heart. Yeah. Uh, so, because it's further away, so it's least affected by blood flow. Uh, it's awful, this picture. Yeah. Yeah, you, you see that you do see this in mm. real life. Mm. So, uncontrolled blood sugar, nerve damage, your arteries are hardened and obstructed, aggravated by ulcers and infection. The thing is, if you have injuries, mm. it gets infected, it doesn't heal at all, and that makes it even worse, that makes the thing will die. Toxin from this infection can spread to the rest of the body, and it will cause you to die unless you amputate the affected parts. That's mm. why you need to amputate. And mortality after amputation, 40% will survive. Uh, some type of gangrene, uh, you can die within 48 hours. That's why you hear of people whose relatives are diabetic and with uh, this type of thing, they say the surgeon say must operate within, 20 or 40, within 2 days or whatever time frame. That's because of the toxic. The gangrene by itself won't kill you. Is a toxin from the dead cells mm -hmm. that will kill. And also, that depends on associated organ damage. So, mm -hmm. for example, if uh, they have this neuropathy with gangrene and the kidney is gone, the heart is very really unstable, you see, it's not worth well. Yeah, the same uh, person. We try and keep him alive. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if other organs are damaged, of course, it's very bad. Mm -hmm. But if other organs are still okay, still survivable, mm -hmm. then amputation may give the person some years to live. Mm -hmm. But it's a major thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Major changes. Yes. So, how do you prevent uh, if you have metabolic syndrome? So that you can survive. These are the things you can do. Eat better quality of food. Whole grains, fruits, vegetables. Mm. Mm. Fresh meat, fish, nuts, low fat calorie diet, lean meat, vegetable. Try to eat less saturated fats, mm. uh, less salt. Fried foods avoid. Fried foods have trans fat which aggravates and be active. 30 minutes of moderately intense activity. 30 minutes is enough. Brisk walking if you still can walk. Cycling if you can't walk, if you still have the legs to cycle. Or swimming. Must keep active, 30 minutes. And if you are still healthy with one healthy body, your legs and arms are still there. Be active. The more active you are, the more you get your blood sugar under control. And once you keep it under control, you're better off. Lose weight. Keep your BNI below 25. Un unless you are fat, you should be like that. Very easy to calculate, you know? You know how to calculate BNI? Take your weight, which must be kg, okay, divide by height, square of the height, divide by height and divide by height again, height square. So, ideally, uh, Normal weight should be, your BMI should be about 23 or less. Uh. 25 is overweight. Uh. 30 is obese. Uh, 26. 26? Yeah. 26 BMI. You are in the overweight, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
That's a good thing. Keep walking. Yeah. Bring it down to 25 and below if you can. Mm -hmm. huh? I'm about 24. I realize that I take bread, I my work more. Sure, of course. I love bread. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Bread. Yeah. 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 Most yeah. days I skip yeah. breakfast yeah. now. Yeah. Unless I need to be active, I need to go out. Then I eat minimum just one slice of bread. Mm -hmm. That's it. Huh? So if I am not having any appointments, I, I skip. You skip breakfast? Yeah. Oh, oh. So they come uh, intermittent fasting at the job. Yeah, intermediate. Oh. I don't always do that, no? oh. but I do. So that's one way of doing it. Keep it there and stop smoking. Smoking has no benefit at all. Yeah. No? Unless you have a family history of what's that? Sarcoidosis, then uh, it's, psychosis is not common, so forget about it for most people. So that's what it is. Okay? What about carbohydrates? Carbohydrates directly raise blood sugar. Yeah. Later on, I'm going to talk about how you can monitor your blood glucose. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for those people who monitor blood glucose, just take a muffin. Your blood sugar yeah. double straight away. Yes, yes. Yeah. Any, any carbon will double straight away. Sugar drinks, honey, juices, added sugars in anything. Rice, bread, pasta, processed foods, trans fat. Take low GI fruits. You know what's low GI fruits? Glycemic index is the index of uh, how much you will raise your blood sugar when you take a certain food. So, all this carbohydrate are high GI. That means when you take it, your blood sugar rise very high. Mm -hmm. Low GI fruits are vegetables, mm -hmm. nuts, whole grain. They have lower blood sugar after you eat them. This is about low GI foods. Mm. Keto diets are low in carbohydrates. Mm. They don't raise blood sugar so much, but they use fat for energy. And keto diet has been one way that some people use to lose weight. They cut off all carbohydrates as much as possible. They take vegetables. They don't take fruits because fruits have a lot of sugar. Mm and focus on fat and protein. Mm -hmm. So there's an almost keto diet where you use less fat but you use things like nuts and whole grain and all that. So there's a lot of advocate of people who advocate a vegan diet. Mm -hmm. That means you take a vegetarian diet. Well not all people can take a vegan diet. It's not for all people. Mm. Everybody is different. Some people's genetic constitution don't allow them to do it. Different enzymes not present. Uh, for example, vitamin A. Some people can tell a vegetable diet. They don't have the enzyme to metabolize vitamin A. And also they don't have the some proteins which are essential uh, to, to metabolize it. How do you know? I have seen people go on a vegan diet and they feel themselves more alert, more clear in their thinking. Okay, you can go on a vegan diet if that's the case. But there are some people who go on a vegan diet one day, two day, one week, okay, second week, they begin to feel brain fog. Yeah. Doubt, then you cannot. But you still can. You, like I say, it takes at least a week or so, right? You can go on vegan for one, two weeks, or even up to three weeks, and then switch back to a meat diet for another two, three weeks, then go back to a vegan diet. You know? Alternate oh, diet. That is, if your body's constitution is such that you can't go on a vegan diet completely, that's what you can do if you want to. Or you can take, like myself, I cannot take a full vegan diet all the time. So, I take a lot of vegetables, but I include meat. Mm. You see? If you can go on a vegan diet fully, fine. No issue. If it makes you feel clearer, brighter, do it. But it's not for everybody. 
So I don't want people to preach to say, oh, you must go on a vegan diet, otherwise you are doing harm to your body. Everybody is different. And we got to be aware of that. So that's what we can do. Vegan diet also including rice also, right? Rice and all the carbo also, right? Rice is carbohydrate. Yeah, so it include rice also. Yes, yes. Okay. Rice, rice is the same. Mm -hmm. Rice, bread right, is the same. Unless you're taking whole grain rice, you're taking of uh, the brown rice, as they call it. But some people who don't take rice, uh, they feel that they're very weak. That's true. Uh, so I cut out rice and I find I'm okay. <laughs> oh, you cut off rice, you find it okay. Yes. Okay. So sometimes I don't take rice. Okay. But I take the rice. Sometimes bit I don't make the milk, milk, cauliflower, cauliflower, fruit, uh, vegetable. Oh, vegetable, oh. that's healthy. Yeah. Okay. Cauliflower is. Uh, what is known as uh, cruciferous vegetables and it's yeah. very healthy. Yeah. Huh? Sometimes basmati rice. Yeah. rice. Basmati rice. Yeah, basmati rice is good. Okay, intermittent fasting. There are many kinds of intermittent fasting. 12 hour daily, 16 8 pattern, that means fast of 16 hours, and eat during the 8 hours, that is equivalent to either missing breakfast or Dinner, or you fast for two days a week, or you fast alternate days, or you go for a 24 hour fast once or twice a week. <laughs> Various patterns, you can try. Yeah. Fasting is healthy because they, they find that uh, mice that fast, they live longer. Yeah, but the only thing is I have an SVT. Huh? No, I have an SVT. You know SVT? SVT, yes. No, no, no. SVT. Super benefit of the Antipodrugs. Oh, SVT. Yeah, SVT. SVT, you have got to be a medication? Yeah, I take only emergency if I have an episode. But not a Nothing if I cannot eat my stomach become acid, so I my SPP become trigger. I have a There are other strategies that you can do. There are other strategies. Intermittent fasting is for those who can fast. It is healthy. Yeah, it is healthy. Even for a short period, even missing a meal is okay. If you can miss a meal, there is very short interval fasting. See? Fasting preserves the telomeres. Telomeres are the uh, plugs at both ends of the chromosome. Fasting has the effect of retaining telomeres. And so that's what they, they found that fasting makes your, your cell uh, survive better. That's what, what it means. And fasting is encouraged for that reason. I tried intermittent fasting doctor, but up to at night with 11 p.m. 12 midnight, I feel hungry you now, so I couldn't sleep you now. <laughs> so in the end, I will take a cup of protein shake to keep me sleep. Well, intermittent fasting is only one solution. Okay. I need to remind you that, and there are many patterns. Okay. There, there, there may be one pattern that works for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this also on intermittent fasting, keep well hydrated unless you are like a Muslim doing your fasting for religious reasons, mm -hmm. then you can't drink even water. If you are just fasting for the sake of health, why? Calorie free drinks, teas, water, it helps. And that's what I used to do when more than 30 40 years ago I used to run weight loss groups. One way to solve hunger pangs, mm. use drinks. See? And the other way is to use fruits mm. or neutral, de nutrient dense food like nuts. Mm. Uh, nuts, yeah. weight for weight, has less calories. Mm. So, nuts they say have so much calories, but actually, when you eat it, it raises your blood sugar very little. It's called nutrient dense. So, you see? So, nuts is healthy, right? unless you're allergic. But usually, allergy only to one, not all. Right? Because the most healthy is uh, walnuts, right? you know. 
So increase your food taste without calories, spices. Various kinds of spices give it a huh? uh, taste, make it palatable, make it enjoyable to eat, but without adding uh, uh, calories. Nutrient dense foods, oatmeal, nuts, and all that. And of course, don't be too active when you're fasting. Uh, because Okay, by eat high volume and just not eat high volume and low calorie food. Vegetables, high volume, not so much calories. Mm -hmm. Oh, this more food that more people bulk, bulk, or bulk, bulk. Like vegetable mm -hmm. always require a bit more. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Preventing blood sugar levels. Okay. Uh, if you are diabetic, I strongly recommend you take medication because nowadays there are many different kinds of the anti-diabetic medication. If you want to count all the various medications available, somebody said it's probably like 60. Well, I didn't know there was so much, <laughs> but at least there are six different classes. The other thing is electronic sensors. Now, as you know, sensors are now the thing, right? You have train that go by itself, we now driver. Mm. How? Sensors. Yeah. They send objects, they sense everything. Right? Automation. Robots, they can move, they can do all kinds of things. Why? Because of sensors. You can even have a, a human robot, a robot that act and talk like a human. Yeah. Why? Because of the sensors. So there's no reason why you can find a sensor for blood sugar, isn't it? So as I said just now, you can have the sensor, you can monitor in real time what your blood sugar level is. How high does it go up? When does it go up? You don't have to prick. If I prick, if I prick at 6 a.m. in the morning, put at 12, at 4 o'clock, at each interval. But what about in between? Do I know the level? Now, continuous blood monitoring means that you monitor the level throughout. Throughout. You can actually know. It's essentially called a sweet tooth. Apparently there is. There is a liver enzyme uh, called FGF21, which if you have it, you want to eat more. Chocolate, sweets, everything. Yes, there is a sweet tooth. But you got to regulate that. Uh. Mm. Huh? Don't blame it on the sweet tooth. <laughs> Apart from intermittent fasting, <laughs> it's uh, small frequent meals. It takes small amount each day. Uh, many years back, there was an American president called Jimmy Carter. Mm. If you heard of him, Jimmy Carter is a peanut farmer. Mm. So his habit was to eat a little bit throughout the day. And that keep your blood sugar level down. Why? Because it has to do with the peak blood sugar. It's how high your blood sugar level goes that can determine whether you're prone to be diabetic. So the, the idea of small inter, uh, frequent meals is to keep it. So if you find intermittent fasting don't work, this is an alternative. It's small frequent meal every two to three hours. Small amount. So that's what you do. Taking small frequent meals, if you come, you take more carbo. You don't. Huh? You don't? You don't take more carbo. You, it's, it's also the choice of food. Yeah, the choice of food, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So, high blood sugar, these are the various kinds of medication that are there. Those that act on the pancreas, those that act on the liver, those that act on the muscle, and those that act on the gut. I'm sulfonyl neurus is an anti-diabetic medication that is often used. It reduces your blood sugar level very fast. Another uncommon one that we use often is metformin. Do you recognize it? Metformin is supposed to be have anti-aging effects. Uh, but it also can be toxic. Uh. 
depending on circumstances. Mm -hmm. Okay, see all the different types. Those that different act, side of action, this inhibits glucose, mm -hmm. glucagon secretion, uh, insulin secretion, GI, your, your, your gut, mm -hmm. uh, your liver output, uh, and so forth. So, depending on where your problem is that contribute to your diabetes, there are a lot of medication available. So, this uh, glucose sensor, right? you play on your arm, you can track it with a handphone or with a device that can measure. So, they are electronic. Can check the signal. Okay. So, uh, quite accurate. Quite accurate. There are different models, of course. Different people. Uh, initially, it costs about a thousand a year. The, the device itself costs about a few hundred, four or five hundred dollars. I checked on uh, the internet. Some of these devices are selling in Singapore for between hundred to. Three hundred dollars. So it's quite inexpensive. Mm. Okay. Sensor for one month is okay. about one hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars. Mm. So it's affordable. <laughs> it seems that if you can get your insurance to pay, you can get it free. Mm. If not, if you pay for it, that's how much it will cost you. A lot of people are now people who can afford it are buying it and monitoring the blood sugar, revealing how. Your body is functioning. How about your blood sugar is? So we know it to put the fingers in the which is functioning. Yeah. So, what can Jarrah's do? There have been a recent spin of papers on this, and I've summarized all the uh, all the findings. Okay, Tara seems to. Able, enable your body to resist uh, oxidative stress. In other words, the effect of uh, stress as a result of oxidant activity. Hmm? And it can reduce the injury of AGE. Interesting. Yeah? That it can do so, it has that effect. It can also reduce the toxic effect of ROS, which is what we say cause all the toxicity. So in other words, this is it, an antioxidant effect. That's pretty powerful. So instead of taking antioxidant pill, you can use carrots. But I wouldn't recommend you go off with antioxidant pill if you have been taking it. In full blood flow, we, we know this is the effect. We know that there has improved blood flow. And it prevents neuropathy by stimulating healing and nerve growth. Mm -hmm. This is an anti-aging effect. Huh? Anti-aging has two aspects. One is to promote healing and the other is to promote regeneration. And that's what it does. Stimulate healing promotes nerve growth. And we know that low levels of therapy radiation prevents retinopathy. So your eye damage, low level at the lowest uh, setting, it can prevent that. It can reduce your blood sugar. How? By making yourself take up glucose. And we know for a long time, because spa infrared saunas have been around for quite a while, it improved diabetes and cardiovascular health. So I've summarized all the effects of terrors on this slide, mm -hmm. and that's what it can do for you. Any reason not to use terrors? I can't think of any reason why you're not using it, especially if you have it. But yet we say, we, I find that some people, uh, for instance, say, oh, I don't have time. Uh, it takes about half an hour to blow. Yes, it takes about half an hour. But half an hour a day to uh, improve your health is small change, isn't it? <laughs> Quite worth it. So that's what you can do for you. Okay? So, 
everybody likes to eat. Yeah. How to solve the problem between eating and the risk of diabetes? Well, in the good old days, during the days of the Roman Empire, there was such a thing called a vomitorium. Huh? When you eat, and then you go tickle your throat, vomit out, and then eat some more. <laughs> Apparently in Germany, they still do it. In Vietnam, that's what they do it. Well, if you believe in that, go ahead. Of course, there's also between quality and quantity. There's no more taking a lot if it's not quantity. When I was in my 40s, I used to take uh, buffet meals, huge amount, wash out with beer. That's a lot of calories, that's like 2,000, more than 2,500 calories. <laughs> and I could do it up. I can do it. Mm. Nowadays, I can't. Mm. So, I'm very selective now. Does it mean I can't eat a lot? <coughs> yes. For example, you're eating dangerous. Mm. In other words, I used to take that big buffet, it was about like once or twice a month. Not every day. Mm. Every day, you probably put on weight. But if you binge, your body accommodates and you go back. And there's a lot of evidence to suggest that this is what the body can do. If you binge once a week or less, even in two weeks or so, you can get away with it. Mm. So I don't normally drink, but sometimes with friends, ah, let's drink a few bottles of wine. Or it's okay. It's a binge. But I don't do it every day. So it's all right. So you want to eat a lot, you are with friends and you want the pleasure of eating with them and have a good time with them, can space out your eating binges. The goal is you want to enjoy your life, put more years in your life, but more life in your years. Mm. Huh? You want to live long and to enjoy long. Huh? No point having a short life, enjoy a little while and you're gone. So that is a philosophy which I advocate. It's not that you can't enjoy. That's why I have my chakwe tiao, my favorite, once in a while. <laughs> I have my <laughs> once in a while. Yeah. I can have a chakwe tiao. You can, once in a while, it's okay. Mm. But you must be able to control yourself. Uh. Yeah. Mm. If, if, if I know people who can't control themselves, but they try and limit it to once a week, which is also acceptable depending on your body constitution you see so i know people who don't take durians and don't like chocolate all these things it's terrible then what's the point of living <laughs> no chocolate is because i when i think of chocolate i think of more oil than you say that's why it stopped me from what the oil, oil that they're using oil. the oil the oil, oil. oil. Oh. Uh, so that stopped me from eating. No, no, the vegetable oil that they are using. Uh, the fried. So vegetable oil is actually more healthy than the lard that they use. So they say. Yeah. But actually, there is a lot to say that lard is probably more healthy than the vegetable oil. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, because a lot of vegetable oil actually produce more inflammation. Mm -hmm. yeah. We know that. Yeah. Actually, lard and butter has been proven to be more healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You see? So I will eat the chakwetel with guilt free conscience. <laughs> Honestly. Mm. You know? Mm. And uh, I also don't have a sweet tooth. Mm. I guess I don't have a gene. Mm. So I ask my chakwetel without black sauce, white sauce only. Mm. Mm. Which I think is a little bit a little bit healthy. But I don't eat it every day, you see. Partly because it's a lot of calories, it's mostly starch. Yeah. You see? But when you add the cockles and all the things and the lard, you know, there is a taste to it which is very enticing. Right? As I said, there's no point uh, giving up pleasures which can be retained if you discipline yourself to space it out because that allows your body to cope with it. Mm. So even if this are toxic, your body can deal with it and detoxify it 
in that week or so. So, diabetes is a disease of lifestyle. So what is a lifestyle? Lifestyle, mind and body. Healthy mind, good healthy habits, nutrition and exercise. Nutrition has always balance of exercise. Input, output, positive outlook, lower stress. Social connection is very important. Not only with life, uh, life loved ones, uh, with loved ones and with yourself, self-care, self-love, self-protection. Protection means avoid being accident prone uh, and connection with people. The more connection you have with people, the more healthier you are. So these are all the things that make up for a good life. See? Have a happy, healthy life. Be serious. Make sure there's lots of fun and laughter as well. So, terrible care is suitable for all these things, all kinds of inflammation, mm -hmm. rhinitis, pharyngitis, gastritis, all kinds of inflammation, various pains, various blockages, various skin condition. I will talk about this in the next talk. Uh, anti-aging with respect to skin. Yeah. So uh, that's will be the focus of my next talk. Yeah. Next talk on the yeah. skin. Because I've been having a lot of reunions recently, and I realized that a lot of my classmates, their <coughs> skin is very poor. Oh. I was at a seminar where I have a lot of retirees, and a lot of their skin looks very dehydrated and uh, a lot of wrinkles. So that's undesirable and I want to talk about that. I'm not talking about a cosmetic point of view. Of course, there's a cosmetic point of view which beauticians will tell you about. I will talk about the medical aspects, which of course overlap with the cosmetic aspect. Now, not recommended for pregnancy, acute disease. I see a lot of testimonies that mention conditions that are acute and then they use that and then they recover. I believe they're not telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Because I know that if they have this condition, there will be medical emergency. Mm -hmm. So they are not telling the complete truth. And my fear is that people reading it will think that, ah, oh, do I have to see the doctor? Just this that mm -hmm. is. Huh? Congenital? Congenital? has to be dealt with separately. In uh, other words, it's, is not, uh, it's due to genetic. Okay. Uh, congenital is due to genetic. Okay. Or due to... You mean this, this para is not recommended for pregnant women? No. no. Uh, how about the people with congenital? Is it congenital is due to genetic causes which you get it from birth, which you need proper evaluation. Mm -hmm. You don't know Everything about in my condition, do you think that uh, SVT? Yeah, is uh, that is a very uh, a question that you must go and understand how we develop SVT in the first place. Are you on a pacemaker? No. No. So your SVT is triggered off by some things. By heart think, attack. Huh? Heart attack. Mm -hmm. It got to be triggered by something. Uh, if my blood and my stomach, if I eat wrong food, uh, my sugar by food, uh, yeah. I don't think it's SVT. If you have SVT, most SVT end up, you need to cardio conversion, cardio version. This is electric shock treatment. Mm. So maybe, maybe you've been misdiagnosed. Yeah, yeah, because last 2011, I had a catheter ablation in Philippines in Heart Center. But uh, I diagnosed here in Heart Center and also in SG, SG, uh, SG. You mean supraventricular tachycardia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a different thing. Your supraventricular tachycardia can be due to a lot of things. You can take medication and you're okay. Yeah. And you can use laser. To yeah, catheter ablation, but not successful. You can then you got to find out, you got to do 
uh, scans to find out where the focus is and try again aiming at the right focus is the laser ablation is you must identify the focus and ablate the focus so if you don't ablate the focus then it's then it, 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 then you all must the, the, the cardiologist must do further studies to find out where the focus is yeah so this can be done but even if an SVG it should stop you from doing a lot of things as long as you are controlled by medication there are uh, a lot of medication now for controlling SVT mm -hmm. but uh, sometimes my stomach is uh, a little bit bloated or uh, it begins with my stomach then trigger palpitation well it can be triggered by anything but the thing is that the, it's the trigger that is the important thing mm -hmm. uh, what triggers it doesn't quite matter you can regulate your life, you can take medication to prevent the trigger mm -hmm. and there are ways of stopping it without using medication as well mm -hmm. so it's for you to find a reasonable mm -hmm. uh, solution to your superventral tachycardia mm -hmm. uh, So bio-resonate can you talk more on that? Huh? Your, 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 I should think so The bio-resonate, the bio, the thing that you uh, It can pick up but it, it cannot up. Uh, you you will still need to update the focus. Oh, I see. I'm not sure whether the bioresonance scans can do it, or even cameras can do it. But uh, this is a specific condition. Oh, okay. Open wound and fracture. The good news is yes. Yes. Cameras mm -hmm. can be used on open wounds. Oh, okay. huh? That's what research. They say not recommended. Yeah. They say not recommended open wounds. But recently there have been quite some papers on it that say yes, it can be used. Okay. It does improve healing on open wounds. Mm -hmm. It does. Okay? So, this is a bioresonance scan. Mm -hmm. It uh, pr produces a certain frequency like terahertz, and then it can detect abnormalities in your body. Mm -hmm. On a scale of 1 to 6, 1 to 3 normal, 4 to 6 minor, maladjustment in your organ system to six where it will be disease. Eh? So far this has been quite accurate in picking up in picking up abnormalities in your body's function. And so what so they do is scan scan your body scan your body. You can detect whatever abnormalities. You can try this on a gene. Yeah. This, this has been around for a long time now, more than uh, 15 years now. Uh, I first used this more than 15 years ago. So the, the scan is $200, but I can give you a discount on that. You can call my handphone. I have online courses available on mental health, stress, psychological trauma and my books which are on sale uh, so if you find what I gave helpful to you please support me uh, buy some of these services buy my books whatever I'll be most grateful to you okay so